This video will demonstrate how to create project revisions in SI5. I will also give you some tips and show you some other functionality related to revisions. Every project created in SI5 starts off as revision 0, as shown here by the selected project. As you create revisions, this number will increment by a factor of 1. In order to create a revision for a project, the project file must be checked out to you. There are a couple ways that you can create a revision for a project. Uh, one of them being if you right click, you can choose the create revision option right here on the right click menu. Or just over here click create a new revision of this project. The create revision dialog box will open and here you can see the default file name is going to be the project name followed by parentheses that has rev0 in it. Well this being the, since we are archiving this revision 0 essentially. That's why that's there. Of course, that number would be incremented depending on which revision you're actually creating at this point in time. Now, we highly recommend that you do not change this. Uh, remember, this is a file name, so there is a character limit in that you have to follow Windows rules on that. Um, we definitely don't recommend that you change this number. Uh, we're going to increment from 0 and count up from there regardless of what you change this to. If I put this at 5 and create the revision, it's still revision 0 as far as our software is concerned. So really what you should do is just hit OK on this and allow it to create the revision file for you. When the revision file is created you'll notice that the revision number now for this project is showing as 1. Now what just happened was a copy was made of the project file, uh, the rev0, and it was marked as read only. This rev1 that you see here is the current revision and that's the one that's editable. It's the only one that's editable. If you come here to the Selected Project Details tab and you go to the Revisions sub-tab down here, you will see that Revision 0 exists out here. We've changed the file extension on this to DTL Rev. And if you double-click this, it will open in our text interface. However, the file is read-only. You'll be able to run reports from it, but you cannot modify the project at all. Now one of the major reasons you would even create revisions of a project file would be to make changes to one of those revisions and then compare that against the revision that you've essentially locked down. Now uh, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and launch this project here. I'll just do it in the text interface. I'm going to add a few products and uh, delete a product. Go ahead and click the Add Product button here. And I'm going to just go select a product from my list of components here filter down to find the product I'm looking for. We're going to go ahead and add one of these to each one of the racquetball courts. It's part of the audio system. And click add to project. Here you have the option to add accessories if you'd like. I'll cancel out the accessories for now. Once added, we'll close the form and I'm going to go ahead and remove a product as well. So let me just go ahead and do a little collapsing out here. Um, We'll move down here and we're going to go ahead and just take out this product here that also happens to have an accessory that you can see listed beneath us. That's what this plus sign indicates. I'm going to go ahead and remove this from the project and click yes on that prompt. So we've made some modifications to the job now. We've added three products and removed one. We'll go ahead and close the project, make sure we save the changes. And now you can see that the price of the project is different here. And uh, now you can go ahead and run comparisons against these two files. Now the comparisons you run are essentially uh, change orders if you run a, a proposal report for it, or we actually do have a change order report under our orders and accounting tab. Uh, both of those functions are covered in separate videos. Here's a tip for you when working with project revisions. You're going to want to probably keep track of the changes that you've made, um, like in a notes column. Uh, we don't actually have a notes column for revisions built into the software. However, you can easily create a Word doc with a table in it or an Excel spreadsheet if you'd like. And you can add that file to each one of these projects here by using the add a file to this project function. I'll just go ahead and browse to my file. I'm going to be warned that it must be moved to the same folder. I'm going to choose OK. And I say the same folder as your project files. Now that uh, file is now a part of this project. Uh, if you go here to the selected project details tab, and if we go back to project files versus the revisions tab down here, you can see that this revision history doc is here. I'll go ahead and launch that and it will open in uh, Microsoft Word, since this happens to be a Word doc here. And I could come in here and say that, you know, Rev0, the purpose was 
this is the initial proposal. And my initials here, Rev1, added X amount of equipment, removed X amount of equipment. So again, just a place for you to keep notes. And of course, you can save this and close it. And it just happens to reside in your project files folder at this point. Now, if you were to run a change order against these two revisions and present it to your client and then they reject the change order, uh, you have a couple of options here. You can, of course, go back here to the working or the current revision, open this up, and then make the changes back to restore it back to the way it was before you made changes. Uh, your other option would be if you come out here and go to your revisions tab, you have the option to promote this revision. And what that will do, it will take Rev0 and it will make that the current revision. It will have a number two because we are going to increment up. You never lose a revision here. We're never going to just swap them out. So you will essentially are creating a new revision. Rev 1, where the changes were made, would come down to this list. And Rev 2 uh, would be the original status, essentially, of the file. And again, it's just a simple promote this revision. You also have the functionality over here to promote a revision.